All right. We'll see how this works. I'm having trouble with the light. I don't know how this is going to work, but we're going to we're going to give it a go. Let's see a few comments. Toronto seems to be running into a problem. You see a a lot of views from people that visit the channel. And all, all of a sudden, they stop watching and commenting, and they're doing something wrong. I don't know. You changed your name. That may be part of it. Um, your, I think um, your content and quality are are the same. That hasn't changed. I think it's probably. Um, just a name change. You're just going to need to stick with it a little longer. Hello, Vincent from France. All right. We're going to get right into this. Now, I posted a video earlier today. I tried to get on last night, but YouTube was so slow. It was like four hours to download something that normally would take half an hour. And even at that, it didn't do it. So I got up this morning and I got it posted in about two hours. And it is uh, one of the clips from a much more extensive collecting trip. We actually went to four to five different places. Um, and did um, that, that video, the one I posted, was one of the longer clips, and it just worked out better to do just that one. I gave an idea of what we were doing. I did show one other spot, and we got stuff from both of those places. So I'll be identifying when we get start getting things in the tanks. I've got three of these jars. I'm going to do three of them. I said four, but the other one's a different size, and I'm using it as the stand for this one. So, so I've got three of these identical. We'll do those three. And what we want to start with is the substrate. Now, I've got sand, I've got dirt, and I have mud. I don't know whether I want to do the mud first or last. <laughs> I think we'll do the mud last because it'll be the most fun. So let's do a real simple one to start. Um, let's see. What do we got here? Okay, this is sand with litter. I've got it collected in here. This came out. This came out of a creek. Smells real good. That's some nice dead fish oats. So I'm going to get about two inches in the bottom of this. Now this is primarily sand, but it also has fair amount of leaf litter in it. And it is um, well-aged sand. So it's got a lot of Life in it. All right, let's get it pressed down. We've got about an inch. Let's do a little more. Do about two inches. And I want to put a bunch of this leaf litter in. These are going to be native systems, so we want it to look kind of wild and crazy. Get this a little deeper. All right. Now, what I need to do is put water in it. I've got two buckets of water. Do I have something to dip with is the real question. Uh, didn't get everything together. Okay, let's get some water. Uh, and then find something to dip with. All right. Thank you. 
Okay, I've got a little jar. What we're going to do is very gently put this water in, trying not to stir things up. It ain't going to be crystal clear. Can we get this about half full? I'm not going to be able to see through it very well. Now I need to go get something. Let me get my tweezers. I'll be right back. tweezers. I did lock the front door, by the way. Okay, so let's start by putting some plant in here. I could have put this in before. Maybe I'll do that in the second one. I think I will. This one's going to be dirty. Let's get some plants in it. Start with a piece of rock. Now, this is a native rock. We're going to put this there. Right down in the middle. And then we collected a big bunch of this really nice lead weed here. I'm going to put some lot in. Got to get down in the dirt. And then I've got some, uh, another plant we collected is parrot's feather. Parrot's feather is neat because it, it grows up on the surface. Okay. This can be a simple one. The first one's going to be real simple. That's about all I want to do with that. I've got rock in it. We are going to put some fish in. I've got fish right here. You may not be able to see them very well. They're blue line killies, Formosa. It looks like maybe a golden fountain in it, or that could be a guppy. Put just a few of them in. Gonna get in. There, got a few. Okay. The okay. So there's one. That's as simple as it gets. Now what I'm gonna do is move this down, and then uh, we'll top it off. I don't wanna move it full because they'll probably drop it. Ugh. And maybe we'll be able to look at it a little later. Let's get a second one up here. Okay. Now for this one, I've got sand from a different location. This, this sand came out of a creek. The first sand came out of a pond. And again, this is kind of dirty sand. It's sand that's got a lot of life in it, if you will. We're gonna get about three or four inches. <laughs> And 
And then I've got this really pretty mat of baby tears with money wart growing on the top and the money wart is all blooming. I got this emerged. This was growing on the bank of this, the third pond, the pond that we showed at the end of the video. So we're gonna put that in here. I'll press it down. And let's get a little more. I've got a big mat of this, so roll up. We'll get some of this mat. Now this mat is in genuine mud. Okay, so there it is. All right. Now we're going to put water in this. Now the water I'm using is all native water. And that mud, a mud uh, baby care, is going to make it pretty dirty. Let's see who's calling. No, no. So that's fine. Well, let's put some fish in. I have shrimp and some, some fish in here. Obviously, we're going to have to do another video on this when the water clears. Okay, that's two. Let's get the second one set down. Oh, how are we doing time wise? Where's my mouse? God, I can't see anything. We haven't been here 10 minutes. Myself. Okay, one more. Looks like it's not going to take a big long time to do this. So once I'm finished, we'll go back to the desk. Now, the third one, I want to do mud. And I've got some real mud here. This is pure yuck. Can you even see it? It is yuck. No sand at all. If I put sand in this, it's going to sink. I may try to do a little bit anyway. Let's see. You rinse this off and do some sand. See if it'll set up on it at all. Let's see. It's not really going to set up on it. Things down in. Okay, that's all right. Because what I really want to do is get a big mat of this baby tears. Big mat of baby tears. We're going to put it right down on the mud, covering as best possible. It wasn't bad. Put a little more in this corner. And you can see the mud is kind of pushing up through it. It's pretty yucky. All right, now get water in this. It's going to be a real trip. 
Another bucket of water. And this is water from the pond the mud came out of. Let's see if we can get it in here. Gently. Now, I'm not going to put any kind of filtration or aeration on these, so they will settle out. I'll uh, probably take a day. I think I'm going to fill this one and then leave it on here. Um, I've got a few fish I want to put in it. And some shrimp. I think there's a garter. Okay, Hermosa, blue line Kelly, shrimp, and maybe a dart. Now we could put, let's see if we can do this. Try to get, I've got a piece of um, Ludwigia here. Break off some of this fruit. Maybe get it down. Didn't want to stir things up much. Sorry, got it in there. Okay. Well, that's the madness. I think what I'll do at this point is pull the. Uh, I've got my monitor, or rather, my computer sitting here on my workbench. I'm going to pull it out, unplug it, grab the phone and my mouse, and go back to the desk. We've done three of these. There's not much we can see until they clear up. I'll do a video or maybe show them on Sunday. I can certainly do that. Give me a couple of minutes to get moved, and I'll be able to get back into a conversation with you. Hang in there a bit.
Well, I'm back. Lord, what a struggle. And it's hot in here, covering 85. I went out yesterday with Frank. We did some collecting. I've been wanting to go out for months, but was kind of afraid to go by myself because I've been feeling weak and unstable. We were out for about five hours. And the longer I was out, the better I felt. So that by the end of the five hours, I was rare to go. I was a little tired and hungry, but I could have stayed out the rest of the day. It just energized me and felt so good. So I'm looking forward to getting out. I was talking with a friend today from Tampa, it's a member of the Tampa Club, about getting a small group and doing a collecting trip. We haven't done that in years, and it's great fun to do. So we'll, we'll try to get one together sometime in the next few months, by this summer anyway. All right, let's see. What do we got? I'm gonna go to the top and work my way down. Chewy, enjoyed the video. I know you had some great things to say about it. Thank you, Chewy, very much. Siri eggs, Sister Lachmo has Siri eggs. Bunchy paints, hello, Chewy. Griffin fish room needs aquarium plants. Uh, got lots of them. I will, uh, I'll check and see if you got an order in, Griffin. Cory eggs, she said, sister like my Cory eggs. Nice. Yeah, pull them out because they'll eat them. Uh, they're pretty easy to raise. Thomas C is here. Sand Creek Aquatics saying thanks for the help. Sister Lockmo. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I've jumped way to the bottom somehow. Oh dear. All right. Toronto, we talked about earlier. Punchy paint, sister luck. No. Let's see. Natural Aquariums is here. Hello. Sandy Doughty. Say hi, Sandy. Toronto has done a super chat for $279. Thank you so much, Toronto Aquatics. You are one dependable, supportive soul. I appreciate you very much. Sand Creek. Is doing a bunch. I was saying hello to a bunch of people. Thomas, are you on Instagram asking Toronto? I think you should be. Way to share your aquariums and make, make, maybe get more followers. Yeah, Instagram and uh, Facebook. Chevy Fish wants to know how Sand Creek is feeling better or worse. And Toronto says to Thomas, thank you. Let's see. Alice is here. Hi, Alice. Natural Aquariums. Plenty of time. Yeah, that was when I looked at the clock and we had plenty of time. Still do, I think. What do we got? Yeah, we're, we got a half an hour, 40 minutes. Didn't take long to do that. It doesn't take long to set up a tank. Let's see now. 312, I want to back up.
Vincent, hello, Vincent. So the mud one is real native. They're all three native. The mud one is um, is the way that pond is put together. There really is no sand. Oh, well, there is. If you go down two inches into the mud, you hit sand. So the mud is really excess nutrients that's sitting on top of the sand. And the sand is so full that it can't take any more. So it's really kind of a, I don't know what you'd call it. It's, it's a, a super saturated pond with nutrients, which may be why the only plant that grows in it is baby tears. I got mud on top of my drink. Well, hopefully it didn't go in. Got a lid on it. Good observation, Vincent. Cody's son. Punchy Pinch tried to get to the PO, but it's snowing. I got to the post office and I got a whole bunch of stickers sent out. I've been putting this off forever. And I sent about 10, 10 letters out with stickers and even sent um, who was it? Sandy. Her um, Or N95s, or face masks. Texas Fish is here. Sister Lockmo. Kalor. Punchy's talking about a winter storm. That's terrible. And it's like 90, 90 degrees here. Natural Aquarium says it's beautiful in the Northwest. Okay, I'm down to the point where I shut down. Did not get the mail yet. Could you please check your email? I will do that, Chewie. I'll get you some stickers. Billy Nomad, nature's the best medicine, as my grandma used to say. Well, you know, that's really what a tank is. It's really what it is. I mean, whether you do it with plastic or marbles, when you set up a tank, you're setting up a natural environment. And it struggles to be as natural as it can, which is why it's so important to use natural ingredients. I'm going to take this filthy lid off. There. I don't want to eat mud. Oh, let's see. Natural aquariums. Hello, Father Fish. I turned in late and just caught the third jar. Interested to go back and watch the first two. Interested to know what you put in them, by the way. Nice. And I jumped and lost. Honest to God. Nice mat of baby tears. Yeah, I had a couple of really pretty mats. That one with the uh, flowers in it, the um, money wart, that was really a pretty piece. It was sitting in the bottom of a hollow not in the water, and it was just brighter green than everything else, so I snagged that. Chewy says, it reminded me of going out and collecting mayfly and mosquito larvae. You betcha. Yeah, if you're, um, if you're fly fishing for spring trout, 
that's the way to do it. What size are they starch? They're about five gallons, KDAJ. Um, I think they're available commercially. I believe Walmart carries them. They do have lids. I didn't put the lids on them, but I'm going to do that and try to keep enough light on them to keep them going. Uh, and then we'll we'll show them Sunday and see what we've got. I'd like to email you about an idea, oh, Chewy, involving netted fish. Um, use my um, father fish at fatherfish at fatherfish.net. Fatherfish at fatherfish.net. I check that one most frequently, Chewy. It'll be fun to um, chat with you. Sister Lachma, last year this time, I was snowed in at the Chicago airport. Aquaballs, hello. Hello, Aquaballs. Sister Lockbo, did I lock the door? Yes, I locked the door. I certainly did. I had a woman in here at the at absolute last minute. And of course, I had to figure out what she wanted and catch it for. Her. So I did that. It was fun. Got her out and jumped right on. So that's why I was a couple of minutes late. Redfish, bluefish, don't realize you were live. Oh, didn't realize you were live. Thank you, Sister Lockmo, for notifying redfish, bluefish. Aquaballs, want to get mud from my mud skippers? Where's the best place to get mud? Well, I don't know. Um, try some local ponds where the water is still and not flowing. Detrius tends to flow to, to precipitate down and will very often create a mud layer. So check that first. You can also go into marshes. That's what a marsh is. That's a mud flat. But old ponds that have a lot of uh, plant life in them a lot of details will usually have mud. And that's a great way to go with mud skippers because they'll be able to pull algae out of it. In fact, if you keep a pretty good light on it, they don't mind too much light. You can grow algae in that mud, which will feed them. Gary's Aquatics. Want to know how's it going today? My first time in your live stream. Thank you for having me. Great to have you, Gary. Nice to have you. Um, hope you enjoy the video. Now, it's helpful if you watch the earlier video that was posted this morning about Father Fish's collecting trip. That was a lot of fun and something that uh, you probably will enjoy watching. Getting a headache. We got some, ha ha. Little pain relief here. Back of my neck is stiff, which is not a good sign. So we'll see if this helps. Let's see, Toronto Featherfish, you probably get asked this all the time, but how do, you be, how do you become a moderator? Let's see now if I can, if I can do this. What I need to do is go over to YouTube and pick up building native bikes. Let's see, Toronto, Featherfish, you probably can ask this. Turn off the volume. Well, precious tranquility is here. Hello, hello. Now we need to find Toronto. 
alien world. I think I'm down at the bottom in um, YouTube. Can't wait to get a close look at all those fish. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll try to get that set up for Sunday. There's Toronto. Toronto, you are now a moderator. Good job. All right. Uh, Sister Lachmo invited. Welcome to Gary's in Texas Snake ID. Can't wait to get a close look at all those fish. I'll have to do that because we had some really nice stuff. Let's see, Alien World. Hello, hello. Cody Sun, Redfish, Bluefish, tons of friends in here, you bet. Chevy Fish, got up to the 30s today, oh my God, it's in the 90s here. Sideways blizzard this morning, 54 car pile up on the highway, my God, no fatalities. Sunday came out and melted most of all the snow, Brr, nasty. Chevy, I fed my larvae to my Malawi cichlids. Good hard Lake Malawi, good diet. Uh, I was talking to somebody who was at, who's been to Malawi, and they say that it's a vast lake. I mean, it's an enormous lake. It's like an ocean. They said that swarms, vast swarms of insects will fly out over the lake and fall down in it when they get tired and the fish will swarm. It's a primary food source for the uh, fish in Lake Malawi. Precious says that collecting trip looked fun. I want to grab some of those lilies. Those are not nice lilies. I'll send you some nice lilies for your prawn. You need to uh, night bloomers, tropicals. Those are not tropicals. And they tend to take over. We'll get you some pretty ones. Let's see. You really know better. You can have record the next fish collecting trip. Oh, Phil Hibbley's asking me. Yeah, absolutely. That was really what I had in mind. Try to get some guys. And I think what we may do is is both film it and live stream it. We can live stream on a phone and use some cameras to film uh, and then try to get some editing. I don't do any editing. Toronto, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Cody Sun and Sam Precious says hello. Let's see. Precious, nice to have you here. You've been sleeping through the day. She sent me some pictures, Precious did, of work she's doing on her kitchen. And it is absolutely amazing. Just the most beautiful, high quality work, real craftsmanship. The woman is an absolute jewel. That's a, just, I was, absolutely knocked out and she had a she's got a, a hallway that she closed off on one end with three 55 gallon tanks fitting wall to wall and then made a pantry out of the rest of the hallway pretty slick yes sister Lockmo was asking for precious <laughs> Natural says, bad mood trying to fly across a huge lake, particularly when you're a swarm of tiny bugs. I think that's part of the feeding process. Chewy says, 
Bob at Candles Aquatic and my friend Marco as scuba there and is part of the Italian Cichlid Association and studies fish a lot. Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay, we hit bottom. I think I got everything. Whoosh, what time is it? 3.38. Let me jump back over to um, Duck Duck Go here. Uh, fishing carts just stopped in. Hello, fishing carts. Let's see, what do we have here for folks plugging in? What's it? 338. About 15, 20 minutes. 30 people watching. 26. Thumbs up. All right. Let's see. Alice says, have you hit the hot button? Most everybody gets. We're doing... Pretty well. Toronto, I just made an Instagram account. If you go to my most recent video, I have an Instagram username account. Hibbly Nomad, I try to record one of my fishing collecting trips this year. I usually go alone, but I try to so, show some of their rare Tennessee native darters. Oh, man, I would love to see that. I'd love to get some. My problem is I can't keep them alive. It's too hot here. They, they just don't, they don't hold up. I've tried it with sticklebacks. I haven't been willing to risk the cost of a Tennessee darter. Um, I could maybe work out a way to do some kind of a modified chiller. I've done that before by sticking a hose through a refrigerator. Unfortunately, it's not a good long-term solution. It tends to freeze up. But that would be great, um, Hillbilly Nomad, if you could do a video of a Tennessee collecting trip. That would be really, really fun. Chris is asking how I'm holding up. Any more crazy kids calling problems at this store? No, it's been pretty good. There are people who come in, the immortals. I'm plagued by immortals. The immortals are people under, I've determined the age is 35, who are convinced that nothing can hurt them and they're impervious to all bugs. And so they act as slow, there's nothing wrong and they can't hurt you, not re realizing that they're shedding virus by the millions just by breathing. So it kind of freaks me out. But I tell you, I've reached the point where I've got to be open. It looks like I'm not going to be eligible for any kind of assistance. So being two weeks behind on my rent and electric, I'm going to have to uh, start generating income. Why am I oh, I'm in, the, in the wrong video is why. So, yeah, there's that. Aaron Price, great, great class today. Thank you so much. Didn't last near as long as I thought it would. Okay, let me jump back over to... Stream yard. Sam Dam is here. Hello, Sam Dam. Nice to see you. You know what would be really great would get would be to get a collecting trip up to Tennessee. I'd love to get into Tennessee some, get into the mountains and the creeks. 
that would be super, super fun. Um, I could probably get two or three people to go for it, too. Maybe share the cost of motels for a couple of nights. Get lost at the bottom of the screen here. What I got to do is figure out a way to keep stuff alive when I get it back. Do I use Instagram? No. I have an Instagram account. I've never um, done anything with it. About a year ago, I had a young woman that came in who set up all, all, uh, all different um, um, accounts everywhere. Every once in a while, I'll stumble across one. But I really don't do anything with them at all. I'm just not slick enough to be able to do it. Let's see. All right, I have to take you up on that hillbilly. That would be super duper. Hi, Sean OOTD. Oof. I need to go and take a shower. Fishing carts going to set up a small tank with all native substrate plants, crawdads, snails, and fish. The crawdads will eat the plants, so you might want to reconsider that. But everything else sounds good. It's probably with really cool stuff like crawdads, crabs, that sort of stuff. They're really neat, but they're horribly destructive. You wind up with that single animal in your tank. Let's see, Chevy Fish. Tell the people to stay six feet away. Yeah, I know. I know. The trouble is when you have aisles and people don't want to get out of the way, they want to stick their face up alongside yours so they can show you the fish they want. Makes me more than a little nuts. I'm developing an immortal attitude which will probably be the death of me, but nevertheless. I talked to my doctor yesterday. You know, I've been kind of paranoid about symptoms ever since all this started. We had a long talk about symptoms and about what to do about it. And I came away with the attitude, I really am not sick. I really am not. And I have no reason to believe I am. If I get sick, I'll know it. I won't have to make it up or pretend or dig around inside for some peculiar little sensation. In the meantime, I need to act like I'm healthy. So that's what I'm doing. I am trying my very level best to be careful. I got masks, I use them, I try to keep the six foot rule, try to keep people away. Fishing card says, I had a lot of crape crawdads, never had them eat plants. Big one always uproot plants and kill fish. True enough. You probably were feeding them well enough. You know what I used to feed my crayfish was rabbit pellets. They loved rabbit pellets. It's perfect food because they're a vegetarian and that's what rabbit pellets are. I mean the food rabbit pellets, not the droppings rabbit pellets. 
although they probably would eat that too. So once they get too big, fishing cart says, I'll feed them to his bass. Boy, there's a great bait. I've got a lot of bass on crayfish. Toronto have a juvenile angelfish and a 10 gallon planted. I want to move him to a 15 tall. Can he be by, I assume the word is himself? Yes, he can. He will be perfectly happy by himself, but he'll be happier with a partner. So once he gets big enough, figure out whether he's a male or a female. And there's a little trick to that. A mature male angel has a notch on its forehead. A mature female is straight on the forehead. Easiest way in the world to tell. Can't tell with little ones. Toronto has a video of the angelfish. I'll check about that. Do the breathing exercises off Wim Hof. Okay, explain yourself, water wizard. <sighs> breathing deeply does seem to help. Vincent says no sign of any flu or cough. Monday, I, I was at a scratchy throat. I did a whole bunch of, of um, zinc tablets and menthol lozenges. By the end of the day, my throat was coated, and I haven't had a problem since then. The effluent rabbit pellets are also called smart pills, says J. Rowe. Rob. Funny. Maybe you have a different type of crawfish down there. All the ones we have here are, in my experience, carnivorous. First scavenger, second. Could be. I ain't no expert on crayfish. I am on crabs, though. I grew up with blue crabs. And blue crabs are omnivorous. But they mostly eat plants. Wim Hof. So what is Wim Hof? Toronto says it gives us Wim Hof. J. Rowe says... That's an old joke. Okay. The breathing I try, the cold shower, I haven't mastered yet. Okay, holiday. Chewy saying, stay safe, Father Fish. I'm doing pretty well. I'm 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 being as careful as I can. Water wizard, cold showers are hard. Just do medium and slower colder each day. Yeah, I used when I was much younger, I used to go swimming and diving in Nova Scotia. That's pretty bloody cold. In the, in the middle of summer, it's pretty cold. I remember I got so cold once, I couldn't warm up. My core was started to drop. I stood in a shower, a hot shower, and didn't help. I finally drank some orange juice, and that got enough energy into my core to be able to get the temperature up. But that was pretty scary. Search Wim Hof on YouTube. I'll do it. A yoga, taking from yoga. Vincent says, Whew. 
What? Oh, dear. So Jay is saying that rabbit poop is called smart pellets, I think was the term he used. Taste it, it's a smart pellet. And as, as uh, Fall Guy says, it's like rabbit poop to me. And Jay says, ha ha, see, you're smarter already. <sighs> Jay says, I'm glad when this quarantine stuff is over. Yeah, I think it's going to be sooner than later for most of us. It's, it's gone on. It's been a month. It's gone on too long. And we've learned enough to know that this virus, while it, while it hits and hurts people who are deeply compromised, one million out of three billion is not a real big number. One million people have, have been uh, diagnosed with the virus. Now it's likely that it's a hundred times higher and that it's simply, most people simply shrug it off. But I think we have in fact, um, overreacted. Most certainly in, in an act of extreme caution and most graciously in an attempt to protect our most, our most vulnerable, namely me and my buds, <laughs> me and my generation. I mean, if I, if I got the flu, I probably would not survive it. I'm a prime candidate. I've just got so many pre-existing conditions. But the one I think most important and vital pre-existing condition is a really positive attitude and a desire to be careful and to be strong. So take that for what it's worth. Well, Chewy, the governor of California is saying there'll be no concerts till a corona vaccine is found. It's going to take all of the research that's been done so far has crashed to the ground because the virus is already transmogrified into something totally different than what it was. And it looks like it's going to keep doing that every month or two. So there's not going to be a, virus, uh, a uh, vaccine. There are, however, some pretty good therapies coming along and some pretty effective therapies. And that's what I think we're going to be depending on is, is the therapies for dealing with this when we're hit by it. The trouble with the vaccine is it only works about 50% of the time anyway. And it kills as many people as it cures. So I don't believe much in vaccines. They're, uh, I think, a troubled fix. I think it's not a very sophisticated approach. Okay, holidays afraid of a second and third wave. Well, you know, that may be. Um, I think it'll be less and less, though, because we've learned, we've learned how to take care of ourselves. We've developed some therapies to be able to deal with hospitalized patients. Um, you know, I think we can beat this thing. I think in many ways we already have. I'm very upbeat and positive of, about it.
Uh, Jim Jay says they may have already had it the end of February before it was widespread. Came on fast and was unlike any other flu I ever had, but they diagnosed it as a flu. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I had a whole host of symptoms in February, and I lay there in a hospital bed convinced that I had the virus. I was hallucinating some really fascinating hallucinations. I solved the meme crisis in my hallucinations while I was in, in psychic contact with meme masters from around the world. It was stupendous. <laughs> Okay, Holiday, we will beat it. I think we have to play the long game. We do, but we don't have to have to play it with the, the extreme lockdown imprisonment that we've put in place. I think we can lighten up on a lot of this. I mean, people like Father Fish need to be kept locked up for his own well-being. But most everybody else who's young and vibrant and one of the Eternals can get out there and get their butts back to work. So on that note, fishing carts, it's a shame because if it keeps going on much longer, a lot of small businesses that aren't open are probably not going to be able to open. I agree with you. I've reached that point. I either get back to work or lose this altogether because I won't be, I'll be too far under. And because I don't have a payroll and I don't pay myself out of the business, I'm not eligible for support under the, uh, uh, the, Cong the, the uh, Congress's bill. I don't have a payroll or anything that amounts to a payroll. Now, I might be eligible for emergency funds. I don't know. I haven't heard back about that. But my hunch is they're going to want some of the same information. And if I'm showing that I haven't had a profit, of course, I've still got expenses. I still have rent to pay and electric bill to pay. We'll see. All right, Precious said, her bank just called about the PPP, about to fill out the paperwork. She'll be able to, I did apply for it. Uh, I applied for it, and what I have to show as a sole proprietor is that I have derived income from the business. And in point of fact, I have not. In point of fact, I put my retirement money into it month after month for the past 15 years. So I, I have no in, I, I derive no income and can't show that I do. Water Wizard thinks there's a plan behind all this. Well, maybe, maybe. Chewy. In Canada, you would be covered. I did not get a social security check today. I got my regular check, but no increase. And I don't know why, except that I've not filed my 19 return. And I have a second retirement income that's substantially more than social security. So again, I may not be eligible. I'm just too rich. <laughs> All right. We're, I think we're there, guys. 452. We'll give it a, we'll let this chat go on a bit longer. Alien World, what do you think of Dr. Stephen Greer? It's really interesting listening 
to these doctors from all around the country and really around the world who are expressing opinions very, very different from the ones that we're getting from the government. I was listening to one the other day that says quinine and zinc are the solution. If you can't buy quinine, you can get it in uh, tonic water. I can't remember the brand, but there's a tonic water that contains apparently quite a lot of quinine. So quinine and zinc. Sounds good to me. I'm going to go buy some. I like, I like soda water anyway. Let's see. Fishing carts. Thank you, fishing carts. I appreciate it so much. Appreciate the prayers. Amen to that. Zen Ginger. I came in at the end. Hi, Zen. I sent your masks off today. You should get them in a day or two. Also remember to put some stickers in. Let's see. What to do? 404. Okay, we're over. Did good. Thank you all so much. Not a lot of fishy stuff. We got way off topic. When I come back on Sunday afternoon, I will, um, I'll do some videos. I'll probably use my phone and do some videos of the tanks. I may even do a video in the meantime. And I'll also show uh, some of the fish that we caught. There are really quite a lot of them. And I can get real tight close up to those. That'll be fun. Chevy says, be careful with quinine. It caused purpura in some people, an allergic reaction. I will go slow with the quinine. J. Rowe just bought 150 pounds of full filter sand. Three bags worth. Sounds great. You're going to love it. Two inches. Two inches on top of your dirt. And if you put it in before you put the water in, you don't need to clean it. Griffin, I'm going to check uh, get gills for your order uh, for plants. I'll do that right away. Chevy, thank you so much. We're going to... We're going to do a countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Vince, thanks, Father Fish. Bye, everyone. Five, four, three. Take care, everyone. Love you all. Two, one. See you Sunday. Bye for now.